will be using Bitcoin without really knowing that it's Bitcoin. Looking at Bitcoin as a base protocol then makes it so that I don't think we even know what we will see in Bitcoin usage. Okay, these people go here, then they take profits. I said, uh, how can you take profits when Bitcoin is money? Bitcoin is a source of truth. When Bitcoin is the base money, there will be applications that we haven't even thought of yet. How old are you? 72 or something like that? 75. I just completed 75 in January of this last year. So, oh, That's so, amazing. Being 75 <laughs> and living through the internet adoption, living through so many adoptions, actually, like oh, the, yeah, the I cell went, phone. Through, yeah, when I, well, you know, the microprocessor was invented in the early 70s. Uh, wasn't really marketable until... They brought out the, the the first microprocessor commercially was from Intel in 1971. Then I was I was still in California at that time, but I didn't really know much about that. I was uh, well, I, I first started out as a uh, as a programmer, well as a as a computer operator on a, what was called the Linton Microsystem. I don't even think they make computers anymore. They make microwaves instead. But it was a uh, 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 had 4K of programmable memory, paper tape in, paper tape out, and a 35 character per second printer. And so during the day, a girl would put in the input, and I would then come in at night and run the reports. And so I found some tapes how to program the computer. And I said, wow, this is, I listened to the tapes. It's like it was talking to me. <laughs> like I was born to program. And so I, I, I started this, writing. The, this, no, was sorry, yeah, go ahead. this was in 1973 when I started that job. And I, so I started programming a little bit and then, uh, we moved off of that computer to another computer and they had a contractor come in and write it in Fortran. And so I learned Fortran from him. And then later we decided to go on to another computer. So he rewrote it in COBOL, but he just, I, he actually just gave me the, the, the sheets and I had to key them into a keyboard, compile them, you know, debug the program and all that kind of stuff. So I, that's how I started to learn pro, uh, COBOL. And then later on, I decided, well, I'm going to go see what a real real programmer job is like. And so I went, I, I, well, at first I thought, well, I'll just go to this interview so they can tell me what they're looking for. And he hired me. <laughs> so, so that kind of started my, my mainframe programming career. Uh, we were on a IBM 360 at that time, mainframe. How, how did so you I, discover Bitcoin with like, uh, when, when you discovered Bitcoin, you were already like 70 or around that age. How did you yeah, discover it? And I, I always wondered how come I didn't hear about Bitcoin in, but um, earlier in my life, uh, the first time I really heard about it was my son came to me and he said, hey, look, look at the, these crypto uh, currencies, they, they're new. Bitcoin, I think he had some Ethereum and that kind of stuff. So it was after the 217, when the, you know, 216, 217, when Ethereum came out. And I said, well, right now I was just, I was, I was then a support engineer for a application monitoring system called Introscope and for a, a major insurance company in the United States. And so I was just coming up to a new release. I just said, I, 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 I just can't worry about this right now. I can't study about it. Well, in 2019, they threw me out of my work. <laughs> they wanted to get everybody back in the office. And I lived 2,000 miles away from the nearest office. So they let me go. But at that time, I was, I just completed 70, 70 years. I was going to work until 72 or 73 and then, but my, uh, you know, and then that would be when my wife would have social security 
because she really needed, she had a lot of health problems and so she needed good insurance. So I worked and so that, but they laid me off in 2019. And one of my things in my life is I, I constantly learn. I want to constantly be learning and, and striving to know something, you know, about something always. So I'm always reading, I'm always studying stuff and, I'm, I'm pretty much a self-made network engineer. I just got the books and started reading them and, and having a router or something to play with and just started playing with it. So I went from programmer to network engineer and later my later life was at the higher level of, of the, of the internet layers in the application and, and the application and the um, display level. And so, um, so I just basically worked through that. And then I said, well, what am I going to do now? What am I going to study? I said, well, I think I'm going to start by studying these cryptocurrencies. So I started to study. I started looking for stuff on YouTube. And uh, there was a guy in Chico, California called Chico something. I can't remember what his name was, but he was a pretty funny guy. So I like to listen to his podcasts. And, but he was in all kinds of different crypto, but his base was Bitcoin. And so I had some Bitcoin, I had some others. I, I like mostly utility type tokens. I didn't, I didn't ever go into any meme or, or a lot of these things. I, I'd always kind of look at the utility of it, like links or, or dot, for, you know, um, polka dot, those kinds of things that give, give a structure or a, an element to the, to the uh, to the token, you know, for, for a reason for the token. Stellar, I like Stellar too. That was one where they they were one of the first ones that that did um, cross border payments in in the payment of the the uh, receiver. And so I until I read the Price of Tomorrow from Jeff Bouvier. It's a, that's a, that's yeah. a great one. Once I read Jeff Booth's book. I pretty much decided, okay, Bitcoin is the one. And so I pretty much got out of most of my stuff, but I, I also got kind of cut up in the Celsius stuff. Yeah, Celsius was a, a big one for a lot. I feel like uh, Celsius got got many caught up. They wanted to have, they want to huddle and they want to get some income from the huddling. And then yeah. Celsius came up with a nice solutions, but they, it screwed a lot of people over. Um, yeah, but you, you've is seen a great liar. Uh, he's he's one of the best liars I've ever seen. And, and I believed him, you know, I'm unfortunate, but I, and I, I ended up losing uh, about two thirds of a Bitcoin. Didn't have a lot out there, but cause I starting after retired, I was also on fixed income. So I, I haven't really bought a lot of Bitcoin, but I'm, I'm a little bit more than a whole coiner. So at least I can, I've got one coin. That, that so, would be a big amount I feel like in the future. Yeah, hopefully we'll see. But, you know, I, I DCA every day. I, I use Strike to, uh, to DCA. I, just, I, I use their uh, automatic DCA because then they drop the commission after eight days. And so I, I uh, my, sometime in uh, 2021 or 2022, I decided that every day I would buy at least 10,000 Satoshis. That's a really good one. That's a really cool uh, target to hit. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm always really curious also about um, you lived through the internet adoption. Like I, I talk about it, and but you actually like got yeah. like from 1980s to 1990s. Then, but after that, with the dot com bubble and everything like that, um, what comparisons do you see between the internet adoption, maybe even like other adoptions like cell phone adoption, uh, to now the Bitcoin adoptions? Can you draw some 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 comparisons? Oh, yeah. Well, I think, you know, when I first started in, in the Internet, I was working at, for a, uh, a big department store in the United States called Nordstrom. I was in their what was called their technology and arch architecture group. A lot of people call it the, the games, the toys and games group, because that's what we did. We looked at different technologies to see how they would work. And so my boss came to me and said, I want you all to be able to get on this internet thing and know what it is and how it works. 
And so we all got connections to, to different things and to start playing around with it um, until, uh, you know, that was even before Net, uh, Netscape came out with uh, the browser. So this was before, before HTTP. So we were using, uh, you know, different, different applications, similar to AOL, but AOL was one of them that, that, that was really good in this area because they, they had a, an application uh, based on, on the lower layers. So one of, one of the things that when you start thinking about Bitcoin as a protocol, that's the main thing I think we have to look at is that Bitcoin is a protocol, not just that, not, not, it is a money. Uh, I, I always say that it is a money and so you can't take profits. I, I YouTube this today is they, they're talking about, okay, these people go here, then they take profits. I said on the comment, how can you take profits when Bitcoin is money? I love it. <laughs> said my profit, my profit is the six, the Sats that I bought at 16K now are worth more in, in fiat, but that's my profit. So, but yeah, the, uh, the, the layer system works very well on the internet. When you, if you think about, uh, you know, having something like, like a web page that then on your computer drops down through the, through the layers to the physical layer that finally sends it over the internet, uh, you know, because you have to have a physical connection to your computer on there. The internet actually works on the layer three level, which is the TCP IP layer. But there's a physical layer beyond below that, which is the link layer and the, and the base layer or the physical layer where your computer has to be connected to an, an ethernet or something like that. That ethernet would be your, your layer two. And then your cable is your layer one. So basically the stuff that I'm talking to you now goes down through my computer, finally hits the internet stack, goes across to your computer and then goes back up the stack to this video that's on your computer. And so, Looking at Bitcoin as a base protocol then makes it so that I don't think we even know what we will see in Bitcoin usage because right now we're basically working on layer two. Okay. And if you compare that to that's ether, that's in the, in the, in the network. So this is basic, basic level that we're working on. And so um, you know, some of the things like the Fediment and those kinds of things, I'm starting to learn more about those as I, you know, I, like I said, I, I'm constantly looking for something to read. And the other day I said, hmm, I need to start looking into this Fediment because that looks like it's going to use the lightning como like a, <laughs> sorry, I, I get my Spanish coming out. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah, I speak Spanish uh, 90% of the time right now, so. Oh, English, really cool. English is my second language right now. <laughs> oh, but English is uh, your first language. Like you're from America, right? Yeah, I, I'm from the United States. I was born in Utah and then lived in, in Utah and Idaho for the first 10 years. And then my parents moved to Washington, the state of oh. Washington. And that's where I graduated from high school. And Did you... Then, uh, Look into uh, like uh, Bitcoin programming or anything like that, that you uh, do something maybe having a fediment on a, because you also learned the pro programming. Yeah. Programming was in a way past life. Now I, I'm COBOL and Fortran and I played around with a little bit of C. Uh, Bitcoin is written in C++. I can read the code. I can, I kind of understand it, but I didn't grow up in the, uh, I grew up more in the, the phase of programming where we're using subroutines instead of objects. And objects were always kind of hard for me to, to, to figure out what an object was and, and that kind of thing. So I played around a little bit with Java because Interscope was a Java monitor. So I, I had to learn how to at least read and understand Java. And I played with Python and Perl and those kinds of things too. 
but I haven't really, I mean, I haven't really done much programming since, uh, since the eighties. So it was kind of like, uh, <laughs> when I, I haven't, you know, maybe in the, in the future, I'll look at it and see, but one of the things I'm interested in looking at is that Fediment uses lightning as it, as its layer, lower labor layer. So the community of, of, uh, in the Fediment, they're, they're an, a layer above lightning in essence. But I, I still think that we're even below that. We, I mean, what, when we start thinking, uh, you know, when I first started on the internet, a web page wasn't, didn't exist. Right. And all the things that we do on the internet now didn't even exist the zooms, the, this Riverside, these things didn't exist because they, they were a, this is a higher layer on the network chain. And so as time went on, those layers expanded to be something that as a, as a router and a switch guy, I didn't care about those. I just wanted to make sure that the packet switched and the, and that the, the routes routed and that kind of stuff. And so the, uh, the part that uh, makes it so that like Fediment is now above lightning because they go down to lightning to, to do the final distribution and down finally down to Bitcoin. So, but I think there'll even be layers above that that we don't even know yet what it'll be like. When, when Bitcoin is, is the base money, there will be applications that we haven't even thought of yet of, of using Bitcoin. And people won't even know that they're using Bitcoin. They're just using money. Okay. I, I love that a lot. And, and, you, and, and you have seen also the, the internet adoption. And, and I'm wondering now, like, You've seen how quick the internet adoption comes, but also how, how long it takes in the beginning to get some of the fundamentals going. Um, where would you compare it that we are right now with Bitcoin? Like, are we in the 1995s? Are we already at the 2000s yeah, with the Bitcoin know. adoption? I don't even know if we're above the HTTP layer, which was 19. Yeah, that was in the early, early 19, uh, or 1980, in late 1980s was when HTTP came out. And I think we're just with uh, something like Fediman and that, we haven't seen the actual applications that are going to be used Bitcoin. And I think AI is going to be one of those where we're going to, we're going to see a lot of the AI using Bitcoin as its base money system to be able to transact and do especially micropayments and that kind of stuff that you really, it's even hard to do in dollars down to this level. It's hard to, it's hard to hit anybody, but the, but really uh, using lightning and, and that kind of thing, you can send small amounts of sats and it, goes fairly it goes real quick and that's the nice part about it so i i don't think we're even in the 90s yet you know we're, we're still in the more in the base protocol and so when you're talking about stuff doing stuff on chain that is something that in the future they're not even going to think about being on chain there's not going to be this idea of I've got stuff going on the chain. It's it's all going to be, yeah. You know, I, I I can't even tell you what it's going to be because I don't know for sure. But I just know that we don't know yet what it's going to be like because when Bitcoin changes to be real money and becomes the base layer of all of transactions, as the applications grow on top of that. We'll be using Bitcoin and we'll, you know, our, our bots and our AIs and those things that we are, are going to be using in the future. We'll be using Bitcoin without really knowing that it's Bitcoin, you know, without really worrying whether it's base chain and that kind of stuff. So that's why, you know, layer twos and layer threes are important now 
to, to work on and to get them as good as they can uh, because that's going to be the base, you know, just, just like Ethernet. When I, when I first, my first uh, network was a token ring. What, what's was, that? It was an IBM protocol called token ring that it was just a different way of connecting computers. Uh, and I had an, I had a netware uh, server which was, a, you know, a server that was basically just above the, you know, at that level. It wasn't really a, it wasn't a presentation server or anything like that. It was all it did was serve packets and that kind of stuff. And so we're still in that level of, of Bitcoin right now. Bitcoin, the protocol layer is still being utilized kind of like it was when I first connected to the internet. So <laughs> amazing. What made it click for you? Like I use a lot, I use a lot of layer two. I have, I have uh, wallets for all of my kids and all of my grandkids. And so I use layer two to, uh, I buy on strike and then I, I send them to them to their lightning wallet. These wallets have recovery set into them also. You know, they have the, the, the password. I, I, I try to always use wallets that have a recovery mechanism so that you're, you know, or on some, I'm, I'm using the speed wallet right now uh, a little bit to play around with it, even though it's, uh, it's more, uh, what do you call them? You know, the, they, they hold the Bitcoin during the custodial. They're a custodial wallet. But uh, I use them to, uh, uh, on my telephone here in Ecuador, I, I don't have a real plan, you know, where I pay monthly. I pay every 15 to 20 days. And so I found that I can now, through, spe through speed, send a payment to the service provider here, which I use, is, well, it's called Claro, Claro. And that is, uh, I can I can send sats, and so I notice that my number of sats have gone down. So it's becoming cheaper for me uh, because my the sats to have my phone each month is going down instead of, even though the price is remaining the same, my my price is going down. If you watch or listen to my podcast on a regular basis, I guess you already bought some Bitcoin. And now the most important step is to keep the Bitcoin. Keep them secure in a hardware wallet. My personal recommendation for hardware wallet is the Bitbox. It's super secure. It's simple to set up. It's also a perfect gift for a friend who has still the Bitcoin on an exchange. And you can get a 5% discount with the code Robert at the checkout. Visit bitbox.swiss slash robin to get your bitbox. And if you really want to bulletproof your self-custody setup, your security setup, and maybe even your citizenship setup, you have to talk to the Bitcoin way. If you go to the bitcoinway.com slash partners slash robin, you get a 30-minute free call where you can dive deep with them if your self-custody setup is secure, if your citizenship is secure or maybe might be improvable, or your digital footprint in general is secure. They are the experts in cybersecurity, in Bitcoin self-custody, and how to be a secure, sovereign individual in general. And for those of you who are in search of a new Bitcoin exchange where they can buy their Bitcoin from, I recommend my personal Bitcoin exchange 21 Bitcoin. With code Robin, you get a hefty discount for all your purchases in the future. That's, that's really interesting. It, it's uh, also fascinating for me when I think about the uh, us two and internet and Bitcoin adoption, because you said like you're 75, I'm 25. So you're actually exactly three times older than me. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and there are like 50 years in between. So my question is now, where do you see Bitcoin when I am 75 years old? Like in 50 years, um, do you have I some, some that, framework about it then? Yeah, that's the applications that we don't know yet. 
because we don't know how how Bitcoin will be used at that point in time because the uh, the primary reason that you know the lo- the lower layers are hidden from you in the internet you don't see them at all right now you know we're using all the layers of the internet right now in this conversation but we don't see any of them and that's when the applications went in and i don't even think it, i think it'll uh i think it'll be within 15 years maybe within my lifetime i'm hoping do, do, do you think that bitcoin will be the only uh money or the dominant money uh in your lifetime or in my lifetime uh, i don't think so i i think fiats are going to be around for a little bit longer i don't have a problem i don't have a problem with fiat other than i don't save in it Bitcoin is my saving technology. And that's what I finally ended up saying is if, 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 um, if I'm going to save money, if I want to save money, I don't save it in a bank. I, I pretty much, uh, I have a, I, I have a, a fund, a small fund of, of dollars that I keep in a high savings account on American Express. And my wife has an account. We we rent the second floor ab- above us. So she has an account that money goes into it each month. And so we keep that as as uh, as kind of a backup also. So if you if we need some some money, cuz I, you know, for a while, especially like here in Ecuador, technically it's illegal to buy and and sell and buy and uh, you can buy and sell, but you shouldn't use it for services or to buy things. <clears throat> but I've always, <clears throat> I've always said, I don't know how they're going to stop you from doing that, but because <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really cool that you uh, 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 saying. Hey, go ahead. Yeah, my. My daughter, who lives above us, uh, she works with her husband. Her husband is blind. He's a lawyer for the electric company. So she reads him the documents. And so she works all day. So it's hard for her to cook food for them. So we cook food. And so I, I, I told her, okay, since it's my job to wash the dishes, we, we flip back and forth. I said, how about if you wash the dishes all the time and I'll give you this many Satoshis? So... I've been technically illegal here in Ecuador, paying for services, but oh, I shouldn't say that. Hopefully, no, nobody from the off-road is, is watching. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. And um, what for, for me, it's interesting um, with all your life experience. What made it click for you? Like when when you got Bitcoin and you learned about it, what made it click? Like oh, oh, that's the new technology uh, I should get invested in. Well, I, I think part of that comes from my past a lot. I, I'm a very religious person. I'm a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, which uh, also known as Mormon, or the Mormons. Do you know why it's called, they, they use the word Mormons? No, uh, I have no clue. Yeah, it's because we have a, a second book that we call, it's a second testimony of Christ called the Book of Mormon. Mormon was a prophet on the Americas in and sometime, you know, uh, kind of between 400 and 1000 BC, there's a history of uh, people that lived here that actually came from Jerusalem. And so it's a, it's a great book. I, I, you know, I, I read it, you know, quite often because it has a lot of good stories and a lot of good, uh, well, I, I think it's got a lot of good doctrine also. And so, but that's how come we believe that uh, the, a young man named Joseph Smith uh, was able to translate that through the uh, power of God. And so we believe it as a scripture, just like the Bible. We use the Bible and the scriptures. So when Mormon, when they say Mormons aren't, aren't Christians, we go, well, the real name of the church is the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So I was born in the church. My father joined the church when he was a young man. My mother is from Pioneer Stock. She has uh, generations in the church. And uh, so my family, I come from a family of six. I was the fourth, 
fourth kid. We still have four of us left <laughs> out of the six. Huh. And, uh, but I grew up in the church and that's, uh, I went on a mission for the church to, uh, to Monterey, Mexico. And that's where I learned Spanish. Is there um, a connection between religion and, and Bitcoin? Well, I think the, the, the thing for me is that I'm always looking for truth. And I think that, and that's why Jeff Booth's book really talked to me when I read it. Because I understand the technology that he was talking about. That, that was nothing new to me. But when he started to say, the only way that you need, you need a money that will be able to grow with this, inter, with this technology. And, and I mean, it's, the whole book is really not about Bitcoin. There's only like one, one chapter or, or a few pages about Bitcoin. But when I read that book, it was kind of like, okay, yeah, I can see this and I can see how it could work. And as I started to continue to study, I finally came out that Bitcoin is truth. If you look at it, you know, based on even the time chain. The chain chain proves everything. So it's, it's, you can always verify, you can always do stuff. And so I, I believe Bitcoin is a source of truth. And I believe that my church is my other source of truth. So I, I uh, have used, uh, you know, I, I searched, I, I didn't, I, I grew up in the church, but I still had to gain my own testimony of of the church you know that that it was you know something good for me and that i believe that it was true uh we have you know one of the we're not really a, a restored or a reformed ch church like the you know you had the catholics and the lutherans and all those others that broke away we're what we are what we call a restored church uh restoring the exact organization and the exact stuff that uh, Christ put on the earth when he was here with his apostles and and prophets and that kind of stuff. And one of the things I always say is we believe the Bible in all in all of it. <laughs> no so not not just pieces of it. So one of the verses in Amos says that the Lord God will do nothing save he reveals it unto his prophet. So if God is not doing anything in the earth, well, God can't be doing anything in the earth if there's no prophets. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's one of the things we believe, that we have a, a prophet, we have apostles, and that kind of thing. And so uh, I, I think one of the things that helped me understand Bitcoin as a source of truth was that background that I, over time, I have always searched for, for this truth, reading and trying to understand the, the, the basis of a life, really, you know, why are we here? Where, are we, you know, where are we going? Where'd we come from? Those kinds of truths. Uh, and I believe that uh, we are one of the only ch churches that have the full truth because uh, we believe in, We have a, a belief of where we came from. We have a belief of where we're going. We have a, one of the reasons that there's temples in all the world is to do work for, for those who've passed on because uh, Christ said that you can't enter into heaven without being baptized. So what about those people in India or in China or all the other parts of the world that we don't even... Uh, that, that have never even heard the name of Jesus Christ, how are they going to be baptized in his name? We, we believe that one of the works that we do in the temple is baptisms for the dead. We do, uh, you know, work for, for all of the people. One of the things I do here on my computer every day is I, I take documents and I index them into, in, you know, so that the computers can read them to be able to have the names and then people can, those go into, into uh, genealogical research databases and that kind of stuff also. 
So people looking for their genealogy or their their past can uh, can use the stuff that I put in every day. You know, I, I, right now I'm working in Zimbabwe. <laughs> Great. Church, registers, church registers in Zimbabwe. Uh, I, I read their their records and I I type them over into a into a screen on the computer so that the computer can basically have those records. And then those records later can be used for for doing the work for the people. Now we don't think we're doing the work and they have to accept it. We we believe that after death we go to a a place where our spirits still live and that we still have the ability pr- to grow and progress in that spirit mm-hmm. world. Uh, and that that's where we would somebody would have the opportunity to accept this baptism and say, yes, I believe and I want this baptism. Uh, um, that kind of thing. So, really, really cool. Um, I'm also curious about as, as you are just like from my life experience so, so far ahead, um, what is the, the biggest lessons you, you early on till now, like with innovation, with technology, but also general life? What, what is your, like, if you had to put it in one lesson, what's, what's the, the biggest one for you? Be nice. I love that one. <laughs> <laughs> Be no, kind. Spre- I, spread uh, Bitcoin with love. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I think being kind is probably the one best thing that you can do with people criticizing and and uh, and you know all the hate that goes on on the internet and and talking about uh, stuff I, I I don't get into that at all I don't like it because to me you're that goes back to my basic belief that all people are children of God and so you are basically not just my friend but you are my brother Okay, because you're one of my spirit brothers. You got born in Austria. I got born in Utah. So we're still, you know, we might have known each other up above. And we said about that, hey, someday we're going to be great friends. So I, I think if we treat everybody like they are our brothers and sisters, you know, that they, which they truly are in, in the spirit, we are truly brothers and sisters of each other and we should treat each other in that fashion so my my main thing i found in life is to just be as kind as i can and when i when i blow it i try to recognize that i've blown it and i try to go back and say i'm sorry i you know i i didn't do well here i'd like to to make amends to this because to me that's the most important thing people are the most important things family is is way important i have uh 10 kids and 17 grandchildren <laughs> oh 10 kids wow <laughs> well four so of seven. them are mine originally four of them are mine originally i was married for 28 years uh and had four children two uh three boys and one girl then uh my uh i always say my uh, my wife got, I, I married her out of high school and I got her through a master's in education. So she, uh, you know, she worked hard at it though. She's a, she was a very good student, very smart person. And, uh, but then in the end, we just kind of went our separate ways. So we decided to, after our children were all raised, we decided to separate. And so then I remarried and uh, found what I thought was the love of my life forever. But in, in the end, I, I ended up, uh, uh, she ended up passing away in 2020, not, not directly from COVID, but a little bit because of COVID she needed an operation and they shut the hospitals down and they, and they, she was ready for the operation and they, they shut the the hospitals down. They couldn't do the operations until her health had now gone down to the point of where when she went into the surgery, it uh, ended up damaging her because they couldn't, they, they really, her, her health system had, had uh, denigrated that much. So I, I say it was because of COVID, but it wasn't because of COVID, but kind of the, 
the reason that she passed away, I, I think, was because of COVID. And so, uh, and then I didn't think I was going to ever get married again until I met my current wife. And uh, now she's the love of my life. So, but there again, I, you know, my, my second wife and I were married in the temple, sealed in the temple. So we are sealed for time and all eternity. And so will my second wife be sealed to me also. So in the, in the, in the future, we'll have a good family. I love that spirit so, of yours. I love, I love how, how you think about that a lot. Do you have any regrets in, in life? I have two kids from her. I have two kids from her that I call my sons. And then I have four daughters from my current wife. She has four daughters. So I have five and five. I have five boys and five girls. And I've got... I've got kids that are older than you. I, I imagine <laughs> 50 yeah, years my, in between. My oldest, my oldest son is in his in his mid. -50s. Yeah, my my dad is in my in his uh, mid 50s. <laughs> yeah. So so I'm like a grandkid actually. Yeah, yeah, because I've got well, I've got grandkids that are older than you. So I love it. <laughs> but I've got some that are younger too. So. But yeah, no, I, I think the thing that, you know, because of my life experience and the, the things I've done through missionary work and through, uh, through service, I just found a happiness that I can't, I, it's hard for me to contain how happy I really am because the, the, and, and this is one of the reasons why I'm real happy about Bitcoin, because I believe um, there was someone on uh, on Noster that said, you know, what do you think about religion and, and this? And I so I, I replied, I said, you know, I'm a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And I believe that these both are sources of truth, Bitcoin and, and my church are the source of truth for me. And so that's uh, and that's what I think Jeff Booth showed me. When I read that book and watched straight Bitcoin and and slowly got rid of all my alts, I still had a few alts on on Celsius that I was waiting for them to get back, you know, from my invest, you know, trying to get my investment back, but I I lost all those. So um, that's that's a, I love it a lot already. Um, but first of all, like thank you for for, for taking your time and, and doing that. Uh, and I think we already learned a lot from you. Um, before we come to the end routine, I have now a new uh, format uh, that I always ask my my guests before we come to the end routine, uh, which we kind of already touched on. But what can we learn from you, Steve, uh, besides Bitcoin, besides all the things that we already talked about? I think that that's the major thing that people can learn from me is... Uh, Well, to, to continue, for, first of all, continue to learn always. Always be learning. I think one of the reasons why I'm, I'm healthy mentally and that kind of stuff at my age is part because I've always learned. I always read. I listen to a lot of books on audio. I, you know, I'm always constantly striving to learn something. Um, and then basically be nice. Be kind to one another. Help everybody uh, to, to learn. If they don't understand Bitcoin, explain it to them. And when they come back again, explain it to them again. And never get frustrated because it's always there. It takes time for people to change their minds about stuff. I didn't get it right away. You know, if I, if I would have got it when I first, you know, I bought my first Bitcoin on Robinhood. So, you know, because I was just, you know, it, to me, it was just a money. It was just a, a cryptocurrency. I don't know what it's about, but it takes time to learn. And so be patient, be, help people. I'm trying to translate documents into Spanish. I uh, found that uh, PPT on what is money. And I went through it with chat GTPT and I converted all the slides To Spanish, so that so that I could uh, share that with people. I did want to Jeff boost the finding noise uh, sig signal in a noisy world. I've translated that also. So that that's kind of one of the things that just constantly learn, 
constantly strive, constantly uh, look forward to the future because the future is bright. And if I had my shades here, I'd put them on. <laughs> <laughs> I love your spirit, Steve. It, it, it's really cool to, to speak with you. Um, I also shared before this, uh, we started the podcast one statistic with you that we actually have uh, six or seven percent uh, of viewers above uh, 65 years old. Um, which is for me amazing that, uh, people of that age uh, are willing to listen to some, uh, such a young folk that have a, as a bit, a Bitcoin podcast. Um, what message do you have for people above 65 that don't have Bitcoin now? Like, why should they be still involved in, in Bitcoin or what could help them, uh, to understand Bitcoin? I think that it's never too late and that you have to, uh, you know, take a little bit of time. Uh, before you reject anything, the best thing to do is to study it and to understand at least a little bit about it uh, before you can say, well, maybe that's not for me right now. But as an older person, I don't think it's too late. I think, uh, you know, even though you may not be able to, like I can't afford a lot of Bitcoin right now. I wish I could. Whenever I get a chunk of money, I use most of it to buy Bitcoin. But my daily DCA is what I, I try to do. I look every day. I have it on strike. So it gives me my phone. You're, you know, today I bought 15,000 Satoshis. So, <coughs> and I'm always happy. I'm always happy to see the price go down. <laughs> it's uh, me, me too, because I'm like, I have my whole life in front of me. I want to buy now Bitcoin as cheap as possible <laughs> to yeah, have it later, yeah. <laughs> later in life. Yeah. Um, we come to the end routine now where the previous guest is asking a question for the next guest without knowing who the next guest actually is. Uh, and the question for you is, how do you think personally uh, uh, CBDCs will impact you? I think they'll probably impact me on the basis that they'll probably change my social security payment over to that. So, you know, so right now it, it goes into my bank account and I think they'll probably make it so that it comes through a CBDC. So it'll be interesting to see how easy it is to get it out and, and buy Bitcoin with it. That's, but, uh, yeah, that's I, you know, I'm, how can I say I'm not afraid of CBDC as much as uh, because I will use it just like I use my bank account today, I believe. But you know, uh, and maybe they'll, they, maybe they'll surprise me and be worse than I am. You know, I, I, th I think uh, a CBDC in the United States is going to be different than the CBDC in China or CBDC in, in places that, that look for more control. Like the thing that we put in the chat the other day about, you know, the EU wanting to register all your stuff. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I don't think I would. I don't think I would enjoy that, but I'll be, uh, I'm going to be moving back to the United States for a little while as soon as my wife's visa comes in and then I'll be uh, up there for a while. And then hopefully we'll be able to travel back and forth. So I don't ever have to spend another winter in the United States. Yeah. It's, I, I kind of also play with the thought more and more to be outside of the EU uh, and not inside after you. Uh, but yeah, it's, it, it will be interesting to see how it all plays out. But I think if you have Bitcoin, uh, we don't have to worry that much about CBDCs. That's, that's what I believe. Um, really cool. Thank you, uh, Steve, for taking the time today. And um, before I let you go, where can people find you? Where can people, uh, reach out to you? Do you have some, some, uh, <laughs> public key or Nostra? Are you on X active? Yeah, I, I have a, I put my public key in the, in the group chat. And I asked for everybody to show their Noster keys and nobody listened to me, but uh, I'm on Noster and I'm on, on X a little bit because, but I can't, I can't uh, upgrade my X to a premium level. So I, ha I'm just kind of, I think my free level only goes to my followers. Or maybe, you know, I know my, my, uh, replies go to go out, but so I'm L Bitcoin for, uh, 49 on X. Um, uh, I do have a, uh, a, a website 
I don't have much there yet. I'm still trying to figure out uh, one of the things I've had a problem with is how to distribute some of the stuff I'm doing, uh, the translations. So I think I'm just going to post them there and that way people can download them from there. Thank you for, for joining us today, Steve. Thank you also for everyone watching and listening uh, for joining us today. I'll be back as always tomorrow with another episode. Bye-bye. Okay. All right. Bye. Have a good one.